Kathy Brooks here at the Always On Innovation Summit with Steve Wozniak. Such a pleasure to be sitting down with you today. Well, it's nice to be here. Innovation. What does innovation mean to you? Gosh, it means um, looking at the world from a different angle than is normal. In other words, if you're taught how to do something, you will tend to look at it from that viewpoint and not from a new viewpoint. Um, innovation, even a joke, tells a story that sounds like it's a straight story, and then all of a sudden the punchline means that the words were going in a different direction than you thought, and it's that different direction type stuff that um, innovation is very much about. I always believed in in change and technology change and a lot of the innovation occurs in just knowing some new lower technology, some new type of chips, some new type of, of chemistry, some new type of low elements you can build out of and build the same thing that people have built before but do a much better job at a lower price. And in the end, innovation is very much the heart of engineering and engineering is all about efficiency. More, a better, a better ratio of output to input. So that's efficiency, and that, so if you can figure out ways to make something with less money, fewer parts, or less time, even that, even that method is an innovation. When you look at Silicon Valley over the, the time that you have been here, certainly you're someone who has helped shape Silicon Valley. It's changed a lot over the, over the years. Well, I've been here since uh, almost when I was born. I was born in San Jose. And so, so it was, it was, it was Santa Clara really. Valley. It was Santa Clara Valley. <laughs> exactly. So what are some of the biggest changes that you've seen in Silicon Valley? Um, I, the biggest change of all is what you encounter everywhere, which is um, the types of people and what they're interested in, what they're doing. It was such a casual place back when it wasn't even crowded and orchards everywhere, mm -hmm. and you could park anywhere and drive anywhere, and people were, um, I think, friendlier. You left your doors open. It was a lot different times. That was a long time ago. Um, so there were no, uh, there were, um, Lockheed moved in, okay? And thank God Shockley had moved to the West Coast and set up in Mountain View, and then all the Silicon Company sprang out of him, but they hadn't really, they were started and they were running when I was young, but they, they hadn't yet made it Silicon Valley. It hadn't been as big a thing as it was going to be once the chip got a few more years into it. What about the people? You mentioned that the people have changed. What's some of the, what are some of the biggest changes you've seen in the entrepreneurs who you see kicking around the valley? Well, the entrepreneurs are less coming from, I have a neat idea because I'm a, I'm a technologist, I'm a scientist, I'm an engineer, which is, you know, people like Hewlett and Packard were engineers, and, and the people who started, and Shockley was, was a scientist, and, and he hired a lot of chemists and other people, and they started Fairchild, and it was like coming from, we've got our designs, and let's, let's bring it to the world. And now it's almost, it's more of the business type people who've been trained in business and kind of have a lot of rules to follow and formulas and presentations and a lot of market analysis and this and that. And the technology is something that, well, it doesn't necessarily have to be here in a part of our company. We can even buy it. It could be even outsourced. So, um, so it's a lot less, you know, that things are springing from the same place. And the mentality is also more on the bottom line and the money we're making and a little less on how, how are we changing the way people do something by giving them a new piece of equipment or a new uh, software in these days. It's, it was all hardware back then too, and now it's software. <laughs> back in the day. Yeah. When you, when you talk about things have, that have changed, technologies that have changed, when you look at some of the technology innovations and products that have come around over your career, what are some of the ones that have been the biggest surprise to you, either because it was something that you didn't really necessarily think much of that got ahead of steam, or something that you thought had such promise that just fizzled? Oh, well, strange to thought the personal computer was one. I didn't really think it was going to come down to um, human costs. And almost everything, the trouble is, everything related to chips and related to Moore's Law has gone down at least a million, maybe a billion times in our life. You get a billion more for the same manufacturing cost. So it's just um, the amount of products. The amount of a processor you could put in a pencil and sell that pencil is so much more than even, uh, you know, an Apple, the best computer in the world around the time we did the Apple II. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's hard to give you one real concrete example. It's, I think, I used to think when I was young that, my gosh, what did the grandparents do back before they had washing machines and they didn't have televisions? What was life like? And uh, it changed so much for our parents, at least it's kind of static for us. And now, all the changes we've gone through, every device in the world can, can have some smartness in it so cheaply, and it's hard to say if it's good, you know, as much bad as there is good. Like, yeah. my, my father's generation, they, uh, they explored the atom, but they also came up with the atom bomb. Okay. 
So you never know. You never Sword know. Cuts that, both you ways. never know. Yeah, you're always going to come with. Yeah, it, it's both ways because are humans smiling more? Are they happier more than they ever were? And I don't think we're happier than the cavemen. I think we're still humans are humans. But we keep designing this stuff thinking we're going to get us there. It's part of the path to get us there. I know that education and computers in schools and you know, making sure that children get their hands on technology at an early age is something that you've been very passionate about. Where do you see things with that these days, the digital divide, as it were? Um, I don't see that much has improved. I see that computers are being used to su supplant um, teaching materials, uh, somewhat teachers and somewhat textbooks, mm -hmm. and just be another form of textbook. It's another media. I do not see computers being the, the kids learning how to solve your own problems by learning to control a computer, by learning to write programs. Mm -hmm. that, um, that hasn't happened. It might even have shrunk a bit. Because everything's done for you nowadays. You buy a program that does it, or it's built into the computer and it does it. So, um, so I, and, the, and going through what I went through as a kid, learning the elements of logic and the elements of zeros and ones and everything from arithmetic with them to figuring out logical equations that get something, figures out how to do, how to solve a problem. It's really good for the mind to have a good, you know, way of coming up with answers that are very deep. But we don't really teach that, and it would really have a place in schools. But there's no room for it. There's never going to be because we have the same number of hours per school as we ever had, and we got to teach the same amount of arithmetic, and the same amount of reading, and the same amount of writing, and the same amount of history, and all the same subjects. So there's no extra place to squeeze computer technology in, even though it's important. In terms of teaching, what about some advice to entrepreneurs out there who are trying to find their find their way through Silicon Valley? Well, in terms of teaching, the only thing I think of is communication, and a lot of. Um, engineers, even entrepreneurs who are from business schools have communication skill problems. And basically you have to not only speak something that is accurate to get a message across, but you have to pretend you're the listener at the same time. You almost have to have two heads in one and you're hearing the words you're speaking and you're hearing what's left out. So you can clarify it right there on the spot and to present it very well and understandably to the listener. Is, uh, is the most important thing. Um, as far as being a teacher education, I'm not, I don't have messages like you should, entrepreneurs should go after the education market. Or, <laughs> you know, it's what you feel. It's, you know, you got to follow your heart. Excellent. Well, Steve Wozniak, thank you so much yeah. for taking the time to talk today. A pleasure. I'm Kathy Brooks My here pleasure. at the Always On Innovation Summit, and that's yeah. all she wrote. My pleasure. Excellent. Thank you.